stand and turn to 228. 228. Good evening. Certainly good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. We're in Psalms 92. We'll look at that psalm and trust the Lord will help. Some thoughts there. And uh, we're going to have prayer. We'll remember Preacher Chris. He's at uh, Pelier tonight, preaching at Pelier Baptist uh, tonight. Uh, Pastor McGuire there, he took some time off, I think. And so Preacher Chris is filling in there and praying for him. Appreciate your prayers. We uh, appreciate you praying for me. A lot of needs to pray about, things to be praying about. And uh, we'll take maybe some prayer requests tonight and have prayer. And then we'll try to look in the scripture uh, and trust the Lord to help us tonight. There's something to be mentioned tonight for prayer. Well, I'm trying to preach tonight on, uh, well, I've got uh, about three sermons. Uh, Hannah shook her head. That's all right. I ain't three sermons yet. Uh, <laughs> so try to preach on fresh oil. I, just some thoughts there. I trust the Lord using it in Psalms 92. But uh, nothing else before we pray tonight. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Let's be praying for Sunday. Uh, Brother Wade Stevens, the uh, Gideon speaker, and uh, he's all excited about coming and being here with us. And uh, he just... Uh, he, He's thanking the Lord. I mean, he's, he's just really anxious to come. And I think he'd contacted Petey some and got some, maybe a little video or something. I don't know exactly what his sermon and his presentation is going to be, but uh, he's, he's excited about coming. And we'd be praying about that and the Gideon ministry. And the uh, Lord just use it. And as they continue Bible distribution and hand out the Word of God, and uh, people. Many, 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 many testimonies through the years of uh, people being given the Bible in, in a lot of different situations and uh, getting saved and God using those people in a great way. There's just there's some really some great testimonies and that's something good to be a part of. Well, let's pray tonight and ask Brother Arm, how about praying for us, will you? Amen. Amen. Uh, again, we welcome you to the service. I was 
spoke to Brother Gerald Rhodes today, or yesterday, I believe it was, and he was telling me, he said, Brother Obed had got back to India on Saturday, I think. So he's back safe, and we thank the Lord for that. In the book of Psalms, chapter 92, I was looking at my outline. I've got uh, one front page and the back page, and I thought about it. Uh, I said to Timothy, I said, you know, this well, this is scattered out. The Lord's sure going to have to help. And he said, well, if the Lord don't help us, you know, we're all in a mess, aren't we? So I'll look at Psalms 92. We'll just read the psalm tonight and look at some verses there that the Lord will help us. And we're starting out verse 1 of Psalms 92. And it says, it's a good thing uh, to give thanks unto the Lord and uh, unto, unto the Lord to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings, upon a postery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thy, Lord, hath made me glad through thy work and in thy works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither the fool understand this. When the wicked spring up as the grass and when the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, O Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eyes also shall see my desire, and my enemies, my ears shall hear my desire to the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the, like the palm tree, and he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God, and they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Our Heavenly Father, again in Jesus' name, thank you for salvation. I thank you for saving me. And thank you for the Word of God, this portion. May you help me in uh, unpacking, unfolding, expounding as you would be pleased with to, to bring forth. And, and, and I pray it would be a blessing, it would be a help, it would be edifying as you've talked about. You've chosen apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors to evangelists for the edification of the church. And Lord, I pray you'd help tonight. May it find a resting place and resonate in our hearts and in our lives to produce action as you'd be pleased with. And then a lot of needs, things to be prayed about. Lord, we pray you'd help. Thank you for a praise report. We thank you for your blessing, your mercy on us. In Christ's name, amen. I want to look first of all, my first point's in verse 10 and where he said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And that got on my heart, fresh oil. I was thinking, Brian mentioned in the children's church, uh, I don't remember if it was last Sunday or, or no, it wasn't last Sunday because he did Hebrews chapter 11 and get a, did a, a package about the Harvest Festival and brought that to us and rounded that up very good. But I believe the Sunday before, he's talking about seeking the old past, the old past. And uh, in preparing this message, I thought about, I'm thinking about fresh oil tonight. And I thought about uh, years ago in the church I grew up in, and it was it was just it was a, a tradition, and it was, it was it was good. They would meet revival meeting, and they used to instead of having prayer, we'd have a prayer room here. We'd go into one of the Sunday school rooms. Uh, they'd just go out to in the age of the woods, out to church and pray, call on the Lord. And I remember uh, one of the things particularly about praying in revival meeting. Uh, we'd start out, we'd have a revival meeting, have a, the first night, we'd have a Lord bless and have a good night. And then they, they put a lot of emphasis on this. They would pray then the next night, and each of the nights following, they'd pray, they'd say, Lord, we've come back tonight. And we want to thank you, we want to praise you for the night before and what you've done, but said that ain't sufficient for tonight. We need something new. And we need your blessing, we need your hand on us. And I got thinking about that. There's some good thought and wisdom in that. And I'm thinking tonight about fresh oil, fresh oil. Now, uh, there's some things I've mentioned just concerning freshness. And give me that, if you will. I don't know how. Uh, there's just some thoughts that come to my heart as thinking about freshness. And there's something good and exciting about, uh, and I'm glad the things of the Lord aren't stale, aren't you? Uh, give me that verse in the Lamentation, if you will, those two verses. 
And uh, it says there, and this is very familiar verses, and it talks about uh, we're not consumed because of his compassions. Uh, if for the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. And then the next verse says this, for they're new every morning. They're new every morning. And great is thy faithfulness. And we'll thank God tonight for fresh oil. Now there's something particular about freshness and uh, just some thoughts I had. And this is one of the things that if from a physical standpoint that people have a great interest in is fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables. We have fruit stands and, and farmer's markets and uh, in a lot of places. And the freshness, I remember, and that's just uh, true to nature and to vegetables and eating, that uh, in the wintertime, you know, they can grow tomatoes. They can grow tomatoes in hot houses and they can grow tomatoes other ways. And they can make a pretty tomato and hit round and it's red and everything it looks just like a tomato. <laughs> But uh, it won't taste like that, and you go out there on the vine, that ripen on the vine, and you pull it yourself and come in there and get the bread and put mayonnaise on both sides of the bread and slice that thing and eat it, salt and pepper and all that. It, it's different. It's fresh, amen. Fresh fruits and vegetables. I think about, uh, and I, I love melon, especially cantaloupe and watermelon. I try to keep down there in the refrigerator in the basement. And I've got my own little uh, picnic ground down there. Hannah's look, uh, and eating the cantaloupe and watermelon, and boy, when it's come in, you know, but then you, to me, the cantaloupes, you get them a little later in the year, and they're hard to break. I don't like the hard ones. I like them that's mellow kind and got all that juice in them, got the flavor. And then we talk, we're thinking about the oil. It's, it's a precious thing. The Bible uh, puts a lot of emphasis on oil. And in fact, uh, oil in the Bible is type of Holy Spirit. But uh, one of my other thoughts was about all most precious, most pure. And all squeezed from a plant or a nut, sometimes it's described as green oil. And, and whenever Jesus uh, is believed, and I'm thinking of that opinion, you know, whenever he, the, the disciples there, uh, the fruit of the vine it talks about, the communion service. And if some think that he actually maybe just took the grapes and squeezed them, just, I mean, juice right there out of the grapes and I got, uh, I got on this kick one time, I had a juicer and, and a shaker and juicing carrots, drinking carrot juice and all that. And, uh, but uh, there is something about juicing and we had that harvest festival, that, that apple is in that old, uh, uh, can't even think what it is, but it belonged to Debbie's daddy, you know, and that, that's some pretty good stuff here Saturday, wasn't it? Fresh, we're talking about freshness. And then the thought here is conveyed in the fresh oil is the, is the spirit uh, refreshes us and the inner joyfulness that is excited. And I'm glad, thank God, it's not, uh, being a Christian is not a, I mean, there's some, <laughs> and, and I might say this, we, you say you're not, you contradict, no, we're not contradicting ourselves. Uh, there's, there's, it's not the flower bed of ease. There's some trouble and burdens and everything. And praise God, that's during those particular times when we really need some fresh oil. In fact, I was thinking about myself, you know, we've, I've got two appointments this week. <laughs> Beverly took her today and I went Monday and going tomorrow and all that stuff. And we get kind of that kind of, so I'm studying this message and I said, praise God, I need some fresh oil myself. And I want to thank God for fresh oil. I'm glad, it, I'm glad it's there, aren't you? And that it is a reality. So then, and then the anointing for a special office. We see that in the Word of God. We see that Samuel anointed David three different times. Uh, and, he, and, God, and Samuel had a part in the anointing. He was in uh, the priest and other things that's anointed. Jesus said that. He quoted from Isaiah chapter 61 in, in the book of Luke chapter 4. And he said, The Spirit of the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel and to set the captives free and the different things. He anointed the fresh oil. And then Jehovah's blessings on his people. So I'm thinking tonight, first of all, about fresh oil. And I'm glad that the Christian life don't, and, and there's, there's bumps in the road, there's, and the Bible bears all that out to suffer persecution. And anybody, 2 Timothy 3 and 12, anybody live God in Christ Jesus, suffer persecution. But thank God there's some fresh oil. And the encouragement in, the, in, the, in your nose times is when we need, thank God we need some of that fresh oil. And I want to thank God that it is. And the refreshment he can give us and the reviving. You know, the revival, uh, we sing that a whole lot in revival meeting. We sing that other times around here. Revive us again. Uh, fill each heart with thy love. 
Praise God. Uh, may, you know, the, the reviving spirit of the Lord, the fresh oil. And I want to thank God tonight for that. I'm thinking tonight about fresh oil. I thought about a little story I'd heard in preparing this about a preacher that uh, had, uh, he, he and his wife had kind of run off side the road and, and didn't get hurt or anything, but uh, and would kind of run off uh, embankment there a little bit, and, and the back door swung open. He had a box of his sermons back there, and they fell out the door, and just so happened there was a little creek there. <laughs> and down the hill they went, and they was getting him poor. He got all upset and jumped out of the car and run down there and trying to get them sermons out of the creek, and he was out there paddling in that water and pulling and First, his wife hollered at him and said, leave him alone. Said, them old dry sermons need a little water on them. <laughs> so they, we need some fresh oil. And I want to thank God. And then as I read on in this chapter, in verse 8, this is a pivotal verse in this chapter. And he said, but thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. And then we go back to our first verses that we read. And he said, thou art most high forevermore. And I thought about the praising of the Lord. Petey in the Sunday school class, he gave us the whole chapter there. He's talking about praising the Lord, and it starts out there, I believe it's Psalms 104. It starts out, bless the Lord, O my soul. It ends up, bless the Lord, O my soul. And uh, he said, I believe this psalm here could say it better than me, and just read that psalm to us, gave it to us. But uh, most half evermore, back in the first verses as we read that, he says, it's a good thing, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto him. And then he talks in verse 5 here about uh, how, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. The great works of God. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on. But then he talks also in here in verse 2, he talks about his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness at night. Somebody said we ought to rest in the Lord in the morning and go throughout the day and then praise God, we'll review it at night and just praise God for his mercy. I thank him for caring for us through the day, don't you? And, and the fresh oil that he gives us and helps us throughout the day. So I'm thinking as we go on here in these verses and we see the great works, and I'll talk a little bit about that, the great works. It's interesting in the Bible, it's always interesting to me to look up a word and sometimes go and see how many times it's used. The word fresh is used four times in the Bible altogether. And it's only used one time in the New Testament. And that's in the book of James. And it says in that verse there, that, uh, that uh, uh, from the same fountain, you can't have salt water. Can a fig tree, my brother, by our olive burdens? Can a vine, uh, 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 and can a fountain, you both salt water and fresh. The only time it's used in the New Testament, just one time there. And then in the book of Job, it's used, the word uh, a fresher is used one time, just one time in the Bible. It's interesting, just a few times. But I don't think tonight about he talks in verse 5 about, O oh Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. And I'll talk about that a little bit, about the great works of God. And in studying this, I thought about <clears throat> several years ago, I had the opportunity of hearing Dr. Bob Gray, or Dr. Bob Jones, excuse me, Dr. Bob Jones the third. And I don't know how many Bob Joneses there is by now, but uh, there's Bob Jones Sr. and Jr. and the third. And, the fourth, I knew about the fourth, and there may be several down the line by now. And I had a good experience. I went down to preach Brother Sean, Sean in Georgia one year, and he had a man there in his church that had attended Bob Jones University in Greenville. So it was on a Saturday. We didn't get to see a whole lot, but he said, let's ride back up to Greenville and go to Bob Jones University. And so we did. We went around and got to see a few things. They, you know, it was on a Saturday. But uh, I got to hear Bob Jones the third preach. And it's been, I don't know how many years ago now, 25 at least, or more perhaps. But one of the things that he mentions there in that particular sermon that he preached, and he was in the book of Psalms, chapter 107. And in that psalm, four times in that psalm, and give us Peter, uh, Timothy, if you will, I can't remember the verses. You can give us one of the verses, but it's in there four times, I think. Just uh, the, the same thing nearly. And he talked about praising the Lord for his wonderful works unto the children of men. And I can't remember how many verses. It's in verse uh, 15, 21, 31 uh, in the book of Psalms, chapter 107. But he, he used that verse and he's talking in his sermon. And, he, and the thing that was on his heart there that he impressed was that he felt like that we had failed 
And that was many years ago, and if we'd failed that many years ago, how much more maybe we fail today, that we have failed to pass on to the next generation that's coming, or the generation that's coming up. Uh, in our generation, we failed to pass it on of the great, wonderful works of God, of what great things that God has done. And that's, that's a, left a big gap. So we're thinking about his greatness. I thought about our memory verse in the book of uh, Psalms 139, verse 14 in our Bible school. And it said, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And marvelous are thy works. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul knoweth right well. And I'm thinking about in this psalm about fresh oil. And I'm thinking about the mighty works of God and the greatness of God forevermore. And it just got on my heart and it, 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 it encouraged my heart. And I said, well, thank God. You know, I'm sitting there in the doctor's office today and I'm thinking about my sermon and, and pray for Beverly. I don't know what uh, the doctor didn't know either. So, but, uh, and sometimes they don't know. We understand that uh, with her hand. And, of course, with just one hand, she's used it twice as much. I guess she would have had two hands. So, But uh, anyway, I just hope the Lord's going to help and do something there. But in our back in the waiting room, I took uh, uh, M.R. Dehan, a book on the study in Galatians, and I learned something while I just sat back there reading a little bit. I thank God for that. And then there's another good experience there. There's a little bitty fellow. He's just a little short fellow. Had, he must have broke his wrist and he had a cast on. And... <laughs> The door was open. They saw them cast off. They've done that to me two or three times. It scares me. You know, they, that saw, they put it on there, and that thing is a saw. And the nurse said, oh, it won't cut you. And the one that sawed it off on me, I called her hatchet lady. <laughs> and I found out later that I went back, and I asked, them, I called her name, and I said, where's she at? They said, oh, she quit nursing, and she's gone on the farm. I bet she's breaking horses now. That <laughs> the toughest one I've ever seen. Now she, she went a bit scared of that song. She didn't, you know, she just act like she was having fun. But that little old fellow Beverly could see through the door. I couldn't see. She said he just sat there and never whimpered, never done that. She said just brave as he could be, and just sit there and let him saw that thing off. But when he come back out there, he's scratching that arm, and I know what that is. You put in the cast for about six weeks, and it feels plum peculiar. And he was that little fellow scratching the arm, but he. I said to his mama there, I said, boy, he's, he's got courage. He's a brave one. But I'm glad the Lord can help us, don't you? Mr. Where, where are we at? The fresh oil is marvelous works. And I'm thinking tonight about uh, his great works and how we need to pass that on, need to be uh, passing it on to somebody else. I've been thinking, and sometimes we get... Uh, and I thought this myself, praying for people to get saved, and you're not seeing no movement, and you're not in their direction. Seem like they're not uh, have the concern, and you just you just keep praying. We're gonna keep praying, and I want God to help them. I was reading in Pilgrim's Progress a little bit, and it's uh, describing you know the situation, the regression sometimes of somebody even. Maybe that is professing to be saved, then you know, drifting away. But the, the you know the conviction sometimes there and strong, and I've seen it a lot of times in situations where, and whenever the Lord's moving, it's so important that a person would would follow through and make a decision. And whenever they don't, sometimes the devil slips back in there and maybe it hardens the heart and it gets uh, more sealed than what it was before. But I'm like God can still move and 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 break that heart of stone, aren't you? I'm just gonna keep praying. And keep praying. His wonderful works, his marvelous works. And then it goes on here in a verse that excited me. And it says here that uh, in Psalms 92, we see the, uh, it talks about in verse 12, he said, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. And I've already said that uh, the, the difficulties in life and the other things that come along, but it, it gives us a good. Uh, uh, illustration here about the palm tree. And it's something special about it. I heard a message on the palm tree. I don't know all the characteristics of the palm tree, but one of the things about the palm tree during the drought, that the palm tree, the roots just go deeper 
and tap into the water. And by doing that, it gives them a strength whenever the storm comes and other things that I've talk, I heard talking about the palm trees have been way over, you know, and, and can withstand the storm, withstand the drought and the heat. And he said that we'll flourish like the palm tree. And then he said we'll grow like the cedar in Lebanon. The cedar in Lebanon. The Bible talks about the cedars in Lebanon several different places. And it's noted of the cedars in Lebanon. And one of the things about the strength of the cedars in Lebanon was the cold and the frost and the other things that, uh, that they came in contact with, they could endure that. And it said that you're not going to be like that. Well, how, how are we going to be like that? We're going to need some fresh anointing of oil is what we're going to need. And the Lord's going to do that for us. And then it said they'll be planted in the Lord's house. And it said it goes on, they'll bring forth fruit in old age. Three points I had about this. Uh, we see here that they flourish and they're faithful and they're fruitful. They flourish and they're faithful and they're fruitful. You know, the book of Psalms gives us something encouraging. Talk about Psalm chapter 1 that it'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Be like the palm tree, be like the cedars of Lebanon. Be planted in the, in, the, in, the, in the house of the Lord. That's a good thing, isn't it? The, the steadfastness, the establishment, and, the, and all that, the unmovable, as we see in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, be ye therefore uh, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that you labor in the Lord is not in vain. Fresh oil, the palm tree, the cedar of Lebanon. Praise God flourishing and, and faithful and fruitful. I want to thank God for that tonight. And the Lord helping me, I want to pass that on to those that are following up behind me and let them know that God, the works of God, and that we might praise the Lord for his wonderful works to the children of men. And the wonderful works, we could just go on and on tonight. What about his work in creation? Ain't that a blessing in creation? The human body, for one thing, I saw Sandy, and she was rejoicing about her brother, some good news about him, the heart situation he had. They thought that there was maybe some stoppage or something, if I understood what she was saying. And she said that uh, his heart, the, the bypassing or something, there had been some, maybe some problem there, thought he was going to have to go back in. But whenever they got to checking, the heart itself had made its own little bypass. If I'm understanding our memory verse in, the, in our Bible school, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous are thy works and my soul knoweth right well. And you say, well, how could that something, the heart do that, diss itself and bypass and fix itself up? Well, there's no doubt in Sandy's mind, my mind, and people that believe the Lord, God does that, don't he? His wonderful work. So children of men, thank God tonight. I'm excited about fresh oil. And now this sermon tonight is one of those that where Dr. Lee Robinson said he preached one time, had a lady after service come up to him and said, I want to ask you something, preacher. He said, was you preaching that sermon to yourself or to us? <laughs> so I'll preach it to myself. Maybe somebody else got some help out of it. Three appointments this week, sitting in the doctor's office and going to Weston again tomorrow. So I'm studying the Bible. I'm reading in Psalms 92, and it said, I'm going to anoint you with some fresh oil. And I said, praise God, that's what I need. And I want to thank God for that. I want to thank God for that. I'm glad to thank God in the midst of the storm. Somewhere in the shadows, praise God, you'll find Jesus. He's there. Amen. Sometimes behind the cloudy providences as we would think of his life somebody said there's a smiling face of Jesus I believe that don't you amen somebody said he can reach further down and we can never reach up and the songwriter wrote a song and said praise God there's an unseen hand and I won't thank God time and again that that unseen hand has touched me when I needed a touch and then the fresh oil. And the psalmist in Psalms 23, I believe he experienced some of that fresh oil anointing. He said, he anointeth my head with oil 
And it wasn't just a little bit of anointing. He said, my cup runneth over. And that's the times whenever the fresh oil, you get the anointing and the cup runs over and it splashes off on somebody else. Amen. <laughs> and we're all blessed. The fresh oil. The anointing has to do with Jehovah's blessings on his people. And we'll thank God for that. Amen. And I'm thinking as we look in the situation even of our country, uh, we're going to need some fresh oil, aren't we? And we're going to need the Lord to help us. And the Bible says that God's blessing is upon his people. And it's always been, always will be. And then we see in our verses here about the enemies and so forth, what the psalmist talked all about that. And then he goes on the last verse and said, there's no unrighteousness in him. You know, Pilate examined him, what, four different times. And four different times he said, I don't find no fault in him. And I want to report tonight to the glory of God that our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, there's nobody but nobody never has, nor they never will find any fault in him. He's tempted in all points, such like as we are, but yet here's the blessing of it, yet without sin. We have a wonderful, sinless Savior exalted on high tonight. I want to thank God for that. They're making intercession, our advocate, and he's blessing our hearts. He's blessed my heart. And I want to thank God for that. Brother Mays Jackson used to put it this way. He said, praise God, get under the spout where the glory is running out. That's where I want to get, don't you? God's good. Let's stand and pray tonight. Maybe by uplifted hand, these things on your heart, and I know there is in our congregation, our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as we lift our hands toward heaven. And I want to thank you tonight for salvation. Thank you for saving me. And I pray you'd help me. And Lord, I pray this, this very day, uh, a couple of people was able to pass the gospel track to, and I pray for them, them two individuals there. And I pray you'd help. One in particular, Lord, you brought me back to. And I want to thank you. And Lord, I pray you'd help me. And Lord, the, you know that in our life, in our, in, in our situation, in our church here, the church family, a lot of needs, a lot of needs, a lot of sickness and things and concerns. And I want to thank you for that fresh oil. And the songwriter wrote it and penned it this way, that just the time I need him, that he's always there. And I want to thank you for being there. And I want to praise you. I pray you'd help us. Our service upcoming, Lord, Sunday, I pray you'd bless in a special way there. And Brother Wade, as he comes, may you just bless him, use him, speak through him into our hearts and revive our hearts and have your way in the service and in the offering and, and to get him ministry in your hand, continue blessing and moving on that in a great way. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.